saw you standing there across the floor. Something inside. When you come to Derry for yourself and experience its age old beauty and the depth of its culture and heritage, you'll not be surprised to find it's home to some of the most artistic people in the world. And as for music, we're the city that gave you everything from Danny Boy to Teenage Kicks. Maybe the easiest way to explore Derry's musical heritage is to take you on a tour around the city's majestic 400-year-old walls. I got a head for the love signs, and nothing ever goes wrong. If you start here at the Double Bastion, for example, looking out over the new city, you can pick out the former homes of Gers Lloyd Siren, Nadine Coyle, Fergal Sharkey, the ex-Undertones vocalist who is now head of UK Music, the Commitments actress turned recording star Rona Gallagher, Peter Kuna of D Ream who sang Things Can Only Get Better, Neil Hanna of The Divine Comedy and Eurovision winner Dana. Phil Coulter's epic song The Town I Loved So Well is set on these self-same streets. 200 yards south are the old St Columns College buildings where Coulter, Paul Brady, Johnny McDade of Vega 4 who wrote the movie anthem Life is Beautiful and Peter Kuna went to school. A few hundred yards down Grand Parade we enter the heart of the city's music quarter, the epicentre of which is the aptly named Nerve Centre. It's a huge multimedia complex housing a concert venue and practice facilities for bands amongst other things and through the years it has welcomed international acts like Ash and the Libertines as well as fostering dairy bands like Fighting With Wire. In the adjacent streets you have many clubs and live music venues where acts including the Undertones, the Moondogs, Red Organ Serpent Sound, the Japanese pop stars cut their teeth. Today venues like Sandino's, The Gidor, Bound for Boston and Mason's host gigs ranging from Irish traditional to heavy rock. So get your belly bag jeans on. A great time for music lovers to visit Derry is the spring holiday for the annual jazz festival which regularly features star names like Jules Holland and our hometown hero, Gay McIntyre. At the bottom of the hill, Guildhall Square here often hosts rock concerts. The square has also hosted two presidential visits from the saxophone enthusiast, Bill Clinton. The Guildhall itself has long been a venue for concerts, from Paul Robeson to Joseph Locke, Derry singing Bobby, who was the highest paid vocalist in Britain in the 50s and 60s. The great hall inside features one of the finest concert organs in Europe. Rounding back up the hill, we enter Derry's Theatre District, home to some of the city's most famous musical venues. Within the space of a few hundred yards, we have the new Millennium Forum and St Columns Hall, which once hosted Jim Reeves. Fergal Sharkey of the Undertones won many face trophies here as a youngster in the hall, as did Dana and Nadine Coyle. And then, a little bit up the hill, you have the beautifully restored Playhouse, which features music on a regular basis. As we turn back towards the double bastion at the end of our circuit, we can stop to admire the former Bishop's Palace, home to the 19th century hymn writer Cecil Francis Alexander. The view from her window inspired Dame Alexander to write the hymn A Green Hill Far Away. She also composed All Things Bright and Beautiful and Once in Royal David City. For me, the most inspiring thing about Derry, apart maybe from the views, is its unending supply of music. A couple of years ago, myself and the musician Declan Carlin wrote a book about the city's musical heritage, which was 300 pages long and featured 400 photographs, and we still get complaints every single day about what we left out. If there's a more musical city in Ireland, it remains damn well hidden. Come to Derry and find out for yourself. You'll never stop being surprised. Mm -hmm.